In this part, I want to cover how to blend substance source materials together to get a very dynamic and unique looking material at the end. So let's jump back into Alchemist. Now again, when we have Alchemist up here, we have that Adobe project that we've been working on here. So if I jump back into this recent project, it's going to pull up all the materials that I have created or played with here. So let's start off with uh, a new material. So we're going to say create, and let's start off here under view settings. We're going to say mesh, and we'll get back to our plane. And we have this new material. Now, um, jumping back here, if I go to resources, we have this substance source area that shows us all the materials that have been uh, sent from the substance launcher. So if we jump back into our substance launcher that you can get uh, through Adobe, we're going to click up to substance source up here. And we have access to all of these materials that we can blend. I mean, close to almost 2,600 or over 2,600 materials to, to play with. Um, so I want to create that rock wall that we saw in the render. Uh, the ones that I, or the, the source materials that I ended up downloading were this uh, French coastal rock. So let me just find that so you guys can see that. It was this guy here. And then also uh, disturbed soil. It's T U R. I'll just say soil here. Okay. So. If we want these materials to be pushed over to Alchemist, really easy. All we need to do is just check this little box, send to Alchemist, and these materials end up down here, kind of just in the library of everything that's been sent over uh, from the Substance Source library. So first thing we need to do, just grab, drag our material over, and it pipes it over onto the right where all of our layers are. Now we could technically just take this and run with it, but I want to add more variations, right? I want to blend this second one in. I don't want it to look just like a rock wall, but I want it to look like it's a rock wall popping out of some dirt. So I can take this disturbed uh, soil, drag it on over onto our rock material, and it'll start blending these two materials together here. Now, as you can see, it reads the height information and gives us what we need control-wise to blend these two together. So in the upper right, we have our layers here. We have the substance source material, and then also this other node that allows us to control the blending between this disturbed soil and French coastline. So let's first jump into this material itself. And we have, if I double click here, we have all of the parameters here. Roughness, metallic, things of that nature that we're used to seeing with PBR materials. So first thing is I can turn down this height range. This kind of gives us a push and pull effect on that there. Uh, also the position, this kind of raises and lowers things. Now with this material, we have color one and color two. Uh, what this actually is, is color one is the dirt color. Color two is some sort of like greenery that's popping up through here. So one thing I want to show you guys, if we end up having an issue with the, where displacement's a little crazy, you click this little button here, kind of pull this back a little bit, and you can see what's going on. So we have the little green in there. That's some sort of grass or organics kind of poking through. Uh, we can kind of play with how much that pushes and pulls uh, with these as well. So we kind of get this where we want it. And then let's move over to the position node here, these blending parameters. So this kind of allows us to, to push and pull the soil while it reads the height information. So you can kind of see how that works. Contrast just shows the contrast between the two. Now I want that kind of high because it's dirt up with rock. It's not going to be like super blended or couldn't necessarily be. Uh, so we're going to kind of pull that up. And then with opacity, this is how much it comes through. We're going to leave that all the way to the top. And let's turn back up some of our displacement here. So we can kind of see some of that. And it's a little bit of a push and pull between where it ends up in the rock and then jumping back to the material and playing with some of the, the height range of this and until we get it somewhere where we like it. Now, one thing I really like is this bottom material color match. This is going to match the color of the disturbed soil to the French rock material. So if I move down here and I pull the slider up, you'll see the color gets something close to what's below it. I don't want it all the way down. I also don't want it all the way up because I want a little bit of contrast. But if you can see, this kind of allows us to play with that. Now, again, we could stop here. I want to keep playing though. So on the left here, we have where it says filters and generators. If we drop this down, there's this little gra gravel generator. I like this because it kind of breaks up the texture, adds a little more, or breaks up the material, adds a little more texture to it. You can pull down the quantity of this guy. And I also like stone size, how big these need to be. And then also uh, matching to the bottom color below it, similar to what we did with the sand, so it kind of blends in a little more. And then another one I like is this random masking. If I pull this up, this kind of scatters the rocks a little more so they aren't so clumpy. 
And then we have some obvious sliders like the stone height. This is kind of the height that is pushing out of the disturbed soil below it. I kind of like to use this stone elevation random to kind of randomize the height of this stuff. It's always important to make sure that we're breaking up our materials so that they don't look so CG and fake across the board. And then the bottom two sliders are just our ambient occlusion settings, how big this surface is, and then the height depth with that. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's move to maybe one more thing. Let's, let's play with something in the weathering here. So if I go down, we have something like, where is it, a moss, moss splatter. Here you go. If I toss this on here, get another great little kind of generator where we can add moss into these little cracks. Now, the cool thing about this material, or, or even how we can, some of the controls that we have with this, is this growth method. Now, this is referring to the height. So we can spread the moss out from top down. And if I click on this spread, it starts to grow. There you go. Kind of takes everything over. We can also do it from the bottom of the height information. So in the cracks coming outward, that's what kind of gives us this. And see, it starts to grow up, kind of up the height information in there, just kind of in the cracks. Now, this is something that's up to your liking or if you're working with a reference. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just what we need at the end of the day. So play with some of these sliders, kind of get the look that you want. Some of the, add some variation into some of this stuff. And then moss scale is how big or small the moss is gonna look in respect to the overall texture. So let's take a look at this on a mesh that is more of a vertical one. So we'll go back on the left here to viewer settings, rounded cylinder, and here we go. Now, if you guys don't see shadows on your end, it's this little toggle button down here turns them on and off. If we wanna rotate the light source, we can hold a shift and right click and drag in the viewport, and that kind of shows us what this is gonna look like. Let's turn up uh, displacement a little bit more. Kind of see how it's poking out. Now one thing, the moss kind of stands out. So I wanna get that color a little closer to the rock. So if we click on this moss color, we can say pick from screen. And let me choose something that's kind of a more neutral looking. All right, and then we'll do something, let's say like 40. Okay, so it's in there, but it's not super noticeable. Let's cut it maybe down to like 25. Just kind of adds more texture, more variation to the overall texture. Great. Now we want to get this back into 3ds Max. So as I kind of talked about in part one, let's go up to the upper right. Actually, first, let's go ahead and save this. So we're going to say save your material. And we can type in something like rock wall. And then you can save it to a collection. If you have your own collection for this scene, this Adobe project that I brought up on the welcome screen, we can save it to that. I've already saved this one, so I'm going to click cancel. But just click save. And that ends up tossing it down here for you, which is pretty cool. And again, this material here can be blended with other materials that you've created now that it's saved in our project. So let's get this exported out. Upper right-hand corner, we'll click Export, Export Current View. And we need to name the material, so we'll say Rock Wall. Again, we want to leave this as Substance Archive, this SBSAR file, so that we can use it in the plugin within 3ds Max. Now the resolution doesn't really matter because that's something that can be changed within 3ds Max on the fly. And then we want to path this to wherever we need this texture to be, which is generally where I like to save it as my, my texture folder for the project. And we click export. There you go. Now you see a little progress bar in the upper right corner here. That'll let us know when the material is done exporting and you can use it in 3ds Max. Great. Now that we have everything exported, let's jump over to 3ds Max and use the plugin to render out this material. Now that we are back in 3ds Max, let me show you quickly how to use the material we created with the Substance plugin. So what I want to do is instead of working on the back wall like we did on part one, I want to put a little plane here in front of this receptions back wall and we'll get that material set up there. So let's go ahead and we'll go to the front and let me grab a plane and then we'll push it back a little bit here, kind of into place. Let's see where we are at. Now there's going to be a little displacement on it, so I don't want it pushed to the edge here as with displacement, it'll come forward even more. So I'll kind of nestle it back a little bit here and that should be okay. Let me pull this forward so we don't run any issues there. Now, if I go back to my wide shot, let me go ahead and add a UVW modifier on it. And let's just say box. Now, if your length, width, and height are grayed out, turn off this real world map size. And let's say something like 20, 20, 20. That should be more than enough. 
Let's go ahead and jump over to our slate editor. We've got a mess of notes here from earlier, but we can either go up to search by name and type substance, or we can right click and say maps, general, and substance. And here's where again, where we load our substance file. So let me go ahead and do that. Once loaded, we'll see our substance node loaded up. Now, again, this is not a material. This is just the reader for the substance node. And let's go ahead, change this to 2K. All right, now, again, super easy. All we need to do is click on the substance node and we're gonna say substance, substance to Corona. Brings us all of our node out. We have our Corona material here. If it'll let me drag this, okay. Right click, say assign material to selection. And that's it. Again, if we're not seeing the material in the viewport, right click and say, show shaded material in viewport. And it's that easy, you guys. We'll click up in the upper right here and we will let this IPR render. Now, one thing I did notice is we have no displacement on that. So let me show you how to kick that up a little bit. I'm gonna pull this down to give us a little more working room. Go back to our material. Now, again, we gotta double click on the material to get to its attributes. And displacement, let's set that something like a foot and a half, let's say. Okay. See if that, let that update here on the right. All right, and there we have kind of a natural looking rock wall blending a couple substance source materials. And you can see how easy and quick that is to do with an alchemist. Export out, use the little substance plugin within Max, and you're off and running pretty quickly here. In the next part, I want to show you how we can use texture maps from our old material libraries as a starting place to create new and improved materials. So let's jump back over to Substance Alchemist, and I'll see you guys in part three.